Oh, hi everybody, Mike here. Uh, I'm not in my chair because I'm behind the camera today because uh, I want to talk to you about this thing. Not that, that's, that's a mess. That's my old, kids' old dollhouses. Here's magnesium. What's up with that? There's three isotopes of magnesium. Magnesium 24, 25, and 26. So it's kind of like these tomatoes. Like there's one here that's the smallest. And then there's one in the middle. In terms of mass, it's like magnesium 25. And then there's magnesium 26. And, well, how come the average mass is 24.5? 305 and not 25. That's the average of 24, 25, and 26. Well, that's a weighted average of the isotopic abundance times the mass of each isotope. Okay, so we'll talk about that. We'll do an example. <clears throat> Ooh, I think I'm choking on yeah. And we'll do an example. Here's chlorine. Chlorine has two isotopes, chlorine 35 and 37. And that's a weighted average. Can you tell which one is more prevalent? I can. Must be 35, because the average is closer to 35. So let's do a couple problems relating atomic mass in the periodic table to isotopic abundance right now. Greetings, everybody. Greetings. Today we're going to talk uh, about percent abundance of each isotope. We talked about isotopes last time and its relation to the weighted average, uh, which is the atomic mass of an element. So here's, we're going to do two problems today. Here's one where they give you the percent abundances and the masses of each isotope. So what you've got, now I don't want to get too bogged down, but when you pack protons, neutrons, and electrons into an atom, it's such a low energy situation that the mass shrinks a little bit. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with the Einstein equation, E equals mc squared. Energy is actually related to mass. And just trust me that these numbers are always a little bit less than what you'd see the mass number of the individual isotopes. So you see that this one, this one element has three isotopes. And actually, if you just do this, if you do this in your mind, you could probably tell what isotope, what, what element this answer is going to be, because there's a heck of a lot of an isotope with 20 AMUs. There's a little dinky bit, almost so much, so little that I want to almost blow it off, but I won't for the sake of thoroughness. Uh, a little tiny bit of 21 whatever it is, I don't know what to call it because we don't know what it is. And then a significant amount, but not, uh, you know, not as much as the first one with a mass of 22. Calculate the atomic mass of the element. So this is what you call, folks, a weighted average. So I'm going to set it up for you. And I'll talk about how you can set it up. There's a couple different ways you can set this up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say it's 90.92% times 19.99 AMUs plus 0.26% times 20.99 AMUs plus 8.82% times 21.99 AMUs. I'm running out of paper. Uh, all divided by 100%. So if you can take a look forward, you will see that when we get done with the result on the, in the numerator, we're going to have something in, in units of AMUs times percent, and then we're going to divide it by 100%. Now, beware, one of the sneaky, sneaky things they can do in one of these kinds of problems is they can leave out one of the isotopes. So 
I don't feel like they've done this because you see how my percents add up to 100 and I'm just going to divide those uh, and the percents will cancel. So watch out if they give you two isotopes and then they say the rest of it is this mass and then you know you got to go subtract those percentages from uh, 100. So just be aware of that. That's something that you could get caught with. Not because it's too sophisticated for you, but just, you know, you'd be daydreaming and forget about that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go crunch some numbers. This is now, uh, and i got to watch out that my aging eyes don't miss some digits. 1817. We're going to trim digits at the end. 0.4908 AMUs times percent plus... Okay, and then this 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 one, folks, doesn't even seem like it's worth it. But Twenty. We want to get the exact answer. We're in exact answer world. That's not how the real world always works. But five point four five seven four AMUs times percent plus this last one here eight point eight two. And you know, hey, when, when I'm doing these problems, maybe you should do them along with me or something. You know, whatever. You're over there on the other side of the screen. I don't know what you're doing right now. You could be doing laundry for all I know. Uh, 193.9518 AMUs times percent divided by 100 percent. So let's go and turn the crank here. Add those numbers together and I'm not going to trim numbers till the end but you know what kind of interesting thing I'm not sure it's clear that there were any measured numbers in this thing they might all be theoretical numbers 193.9518 so what do I got 2016.9 2, AMUs times percent Divided by 100%. Could do that in my head. 20.169 percent cancels AMUs. Now, you know what I'm going to do? All those numbers were given me to me to the hundredth. I'm going to call it 20.17. AMUs. And I'm going to declare that as my answer. All right? But what I'm going to do is not just move on. I'm going to go and question myself and say, what does that sound like? And I bet you I could say that to me, and it did in the beginning. Focus. That did to me. It uh, sounded to me a heck of a lot like neon. So that is neon 20, neon 21. And neon 22 is what we had. And uh, the good news about having these kinds of problems is you should be able to go look in the periodic table and find your answer and feel good about yourself. So uh, let's try another one. We'll do another one that's one of the example problems in the book right up here next. The next type of problem you might encounter in your journey is where we go backwards. So what we're going to do, and, and this is probably the one you're more likely to see and the one that's a little bit more work, is where they give you the masses of the two isotopes, like an example 2.5 in the OpenStax book in Chapter 2. So here's the mass. you got chlorine 35. Once, in a, once again, it's not exactly 35, but uh, chlorine 37. What's the percent? And you'd be like, hey, where do I get my other numbers for? So let's, let's, let's set it up the same way. Now what I'm going to do, folks, unlike the last one, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to simplify by getting rid of that 100% at the bottom. We all know that like 0.1 is the same thing as 100%. So what we got is we, at the end, if we do it the way I'm going to set it up, you got the added work 
of multiplying your answer by 100%. So when you have 30% off at the grocery store, you know that's multiplying by 0.3. So I'll set it up this way, a little bit different this time. And you pick the way you want to do it. So this is going to be 34.96885 AMUs. Oh, oh, I don't know what the percent is. So I'm going to call it X plus 36.96590 AMUs, and I'm going to call that Y. And then equals what? I'm going to go look it up in my friend, the periodic table of the elements. Chlorine's right there, and as you can see, 35.45 AMUs is the mass, average mass. Now, let's, let's sit there and reflect. When you're solving a problem like this, it helps to have a little bit of logical prejudice, I guess I'd call it. It's, it's, it's not like social prejudice, which is bad. This is actually good prejudice. I should be telling myself that, hey, that average is closer to 35 than it is 37. So there must be, when I get the result of what X and Y are, I, I better find out that X is a bigger number than is uh, Y. And then you know what else, folks? Uh, I can even go further than that. That average is about three quarters of the way between 35 and 37. I'm going to throw it out there that this has got a percent abundance of about 70 something, 75 percent ish of 35 and 20. Well, okay, we can just quit right there. No, we're going to get an exact answer because that's what we're here to do. Problem is, I got two variables right now. But don't you agree with me that x plus y have got to be equal to 100% or in this case, because I got rid of the 100% and I just used a fraction, x plus y got to be equal to 1. Right? So uh, you got to choose. What do you like better, y's or x's? I like x's better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say y. I'm going to do a little quick math here. Y would be if I took uh, and said uh, solve for it, it would be 1 minus x. Let's substitute that in for y, for y. By the way, I've seen this done a million times, and sometimes people will get it backwards and say y is x minus 1. That does not work out, and I'll show you how you can short circuit that problem at the end. So I'm going to go ahead, and, so, and you know these things are kind of boring, but just don't daydream too much during them. 34.96885. Hey, you know what? Can I just lose the units for now? I'm going to go ahead and do that x. We know that, that that's going to be units of, it's, it's going to be fraction actually. Plus, stick that right in there, 36.96590 times 1 minus x equals 35.45. I'm not saying don't put units in your answer, I'm just saying it would really be better if we didn't uh, clutter this thing up. Now I'm going to go ahead and, ooh, fancy math terms, I'm going to distribute. But I'm going to go ahead and write everything again. See what I did there? I almost missed that 8. And that's because I was thinking about what I was going to say next and daydreaming. So just got to focus power. 36.9590 minus 36.9590. Equals 35.45. Okay. Now, I don't know about you folks, but I like all my X's on one side. So, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and combine these two X's. I'm going to say 34.96885. And actually, that's a negative over there. So, minus 36.96590. So, got all my x's together, 1.99705, I should say I've isolated x, plus 36.96590 equals 35.45. 
and I got to get all the, the other number. I got to get this number over there now. I don't know. When I learned algebra, I learned when it takes a trip across the equal sign, it changes sign. But I see most, most of you young folks coming out of K through 12 are doing this, which is wonderfully fine. And I'm still not feeling horribly bad about myself. That'll cancel. So back down to here, minus 1.99705x equals the sum of those two, 35.45 minus 36.96590. Now I'll tell you what could happen wrong here. If I got a negative on one side and not a negative on the other, I would be a little bit worried. I'd be a little bit more than worried, actually. It'd be something whack, wiggity, wiggity, whack. So at least I know my x is going to be a positive number. Hey, look what I'm going to do. Bang, bang. Can I do that? I just did that. If you don't like it, too bad. All right, no, I'm just kidding, whatever way you're thinking. But I just multiplied both sides by negative 1. So 1.5159 divided by 1.99705. Okay, now here's where I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get a huge number. Let's get the huge number. 0 0.7. Hey, look at my result, folks. It came out to be what I just about thought it was going to be. 7 nine zero six nine this is my calculator you know they don't they don't understand sig figs six two eight now first of all I'm gonna go ahead and do two things I am going to be specific about what that number is and secondly I'm gonna multiply by a hundred percent because that's what I did by saving a step where I didn't divide by a hundred percent I gotta realize that ain't, that ain't a quarter that ain't three quarters of a percent because of what we kind of figured out already. So I'm going to do times 100%. Percents are units, right? We like percents. We like things. Percent. It's right, in the, it's right in the name of it, by the way. I don't know if you ever think about that. Per hundred. And then I'm going to trim this to a tenth, two tenths. Because, uh, so this is going to be, and remember, what did X mean? X meant way back up here, the percentage of chlorine, 35 and it's going to be 75.91 percent and the percentage of chlorine 37 is 100 minus that and that is going to be the end I'll tell you why we're going to feel so good about that so um, this one let me call that 24.0.09 seems logical seeing as the weighted average is closer to 35 than 37. If you went back and plugged that in, you went and plugged that back in, you would get 35.45 AMUs, or at least really close to that. And so that is how you solve. Now, you might say, what if they give us three isotopes? And you know what the beauty is? They ain't, because you can't solve it. There's too many variables. So they can only shoot at you these problems that only have two isotopes. Who are those? Uh, not hydrogen, not carbon, as we talked about. Boron has two isotopes. Uh, what else? Something like gallium. So there's a few elements with two isotopes, and once you've done a few of these, you've mastered them. By the way, did you notice I wrote the chlorine problem in green? Because chlorine's green. <laughs> and, and don't... If you pour the wrong thing in the Clorox and a green cloud comes at you, you better run the other way. So uh, that's my safety tip of the day. And now, folks, you know how to solve the only two ways I've ever seen in my 26 and a half years of uh, isotopic abundance to overall atomic mass. So every number on that periodic table is a weighted average. And now you know how to slay those problems. Uh, hey, next time we get to talk about why when you eat a potato chip, your stomach doesn't explode. Teaser alert. That's what's going to happen when we talk about stable ions. See you then, folks. Take care.